Are you wondering or interested in what nutrients are really important to focus on for your baby or yourself as a pregnant mommy? This mini series is just for you. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive into DHA. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I'm a board certified pediatrician and mom myself. This next mini series is one that I really um, feel passionately about, both as a mother and a pediatrician. I want to take some time to really talk to everybody about key nutrients for brain development, particularly in the first 1,000 days, and why that's so important. So typically, I start talking about nutrition again in the second or third trimester with my expecting mommies. Um, and that's because it plays such a critical role in a child's overall development. Nutrients are really the fuel and building blocks that help babies and fetuses build their brains um, and their developing nervous system. And that starts from the day that they are conceived. So why the first thousand days? Well, there have been eight vital nutrients that were identified to play a specific role in the first 1000 days of life. And those are namely carotenoids, those are going to be like that vitamin A's, choline, folate, iodine, iron, omega fatty three acids, and vitamin D. And why the first 1,000 days? So in the first 1,000 days, that's before your baby turns two, they're really going through peak brain development. So that includes things like their nervous system. So that starts with the neural tube and their spinal cord going all the way to the frontal cortex. If you want a really nice explanation about the first 1,000 days, there is um, a foundation called The First Thousand Days, and they provide a really great article to explain why nutrition matters so much in this beginning vulnerable time for babies and why it's such an important thing to be talking about expecting mothers too. And while all nutrients are really important for brain growth and function, some play a larger role in brain development than others. And so the American Academy of Pediatrics Committee on Nutrition has really identified key nutrients that they think are important for healthy brain development. And we are going to do one episode on each nutrient specifically. So today I'm going to focus on DHA, which is one of those omega-3s. Um, and in each episode, we're going to talk about each nutrient, um, its role and its impact on development, um, and then sources for, from which you can get it, um, and about how much a child needs. And if you're considering supplementation, what might be good resources for that as well. Let's start talking a lot about DHA and take a deep dive in. So DHA is really important for many functions of the nervous system, but let's start with the brain. DHA is a major structural component of the brain, and it is really critical for brain development. We had talked about in previous episodes, the role of DHA, and if there's any evidence for DHA supplementation in sleep. Um, so you can take a look, uh, listen to those episodes if you find that interesting. DHA and adequate DHA levels really also support cognitive development, learning, memory, problem solving skills, which are really rapidly developing in those first couple of years of life. Um, and so it's essential that the baby has enough fuel to build these. DHA is a key component of the retina. Um, and so it supports important visual development and function, contributing to better, healthier visual acuity and overall eye health. So again, you really want to make sure you're having proper DHA intake to help with the development of um, visual perception, hand-eye coordination in your retina. In terms of the nervous system, DHA also plays an important role in the maintenance of nerve cells and the nervous system. It helps support the neuronal connections and the integrity of nerve cells, which is important and, and to both their development and then also actually maintaining their function. So DHA is an important micronutrient throughout your entire life, but particularly important for developing fetuses and children. And then we kind of talked about this a little bit in previous episodes, but DHA has also been linked to certain behavior development and emotional well-being. So there are studies that suggest that DHA might help mood regulation, help contribute to overall emotional health. There are studies that suggest that it might help children, particularly those with ADHD and ADD, as well as children with asthma. Um, so it does seem to play an interesting and potentially important role in behavioral health, although we haven't fully identified the pathophysiology behind that. 
So just to kind of link that in, as I, I mentioned asthma at the end there, but one of the under talked about values um, and importance of DHA is its ability to help um, modulate the immune system. So adequate DHA levels actually support the development of the immune response, um, potentially reducing the risk of inflammatory conditions and infections, many of which are big triggers for patients with asthma. So we believe that's why it might help patients with asthma. But regardless, um, the evidence here in those last two is Kind of limited. It's not great, robust evidence, but there's tons of other reasons to be taking DHA outside its support of the immune system and potential behavioral development. So what are sources of DHA by age? So in the beginning for pregnant mommies, their best sources of DHA are going to be food. Um, there is a lot of concern, I think, from pregnant mothers about the sources of DHA, particularly um, seafood sources being like fatty fish, having other contamination with heavy metals. And we did a whole episode about heavy metals and how to reduce that. But if that is a particular concern, there are other sources of DHA available for sure. So DHA can be found um, in algae as, other, as well as other plant-based resources. So if you're going to supplement with DHA, you can actually now get vegan DHA supplements if you're concerned about the fatty fish supplement. Um, and those can be really nice choices. I actually really like, um, again, I have no sponsorship from them, I just mention it to my patients a lot that I, I particularly like um, the Ritual DHA vegan source because it doesn't have a bad aftertaste to it and it's really well tolerated by a lot of my patients. The downside to that is that it's a pill. So for pregnant mommies, you can either get it from eating algae or other plant sources, or you can get it from fatty fish, or you can choose to take a supplement, either a fish-based supplement or a vegan plant-based supplement. So the best source of DHA for an infant or newborn is either going to be breast milk or formula. For breast milk, there is a natural form of DHA that is made in breast milk, um, and the amount of DHA correlates strongly to how much DHA is in the mom's diet. So again, as a pediatrician, it's important, I think, to be talking to our mothers, especially our breastfeeding mommies, about nutrition and making them aware of the importance and the role of DHA in their diet if they're not getting it from foods to think about supplementing it. For formula, it's added into formula. Um, and so most formulas have DHA added into them, but you can always check your formula to make sure. For older children, so those who have started solids um, or are now older and not on breast milk and formula and just on solid foods, they can definitely get DHA from their diet. So they can get DHA again from fish, which can be opt for those lower heavy metal contaminated fish. Those are going to be like things like salmon and sardines and try to stay away from the heavy metal, heavy contaminated food like the swordfish and shark. If they do not eat fish, you can always give them um, supplements or think about plant-based sources of DHA, which again are gonna be kind of those algae um, or vegetarian options. If you're thinking about or considering supplements, again, I encourage you to talk to your pediatrician first or your medical provider first, but there are now options in both vegan plant-based DHA supplements as well as fish-based supplements. They come in pills, they come in gummies, although my dental friends will tell you, just, you know, we should try to stay away from the gummies and get it really from plants if you can, plants or fish. That was kind of a lot of information on DHA. Hope you guys found the information helpful um, and interesting. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, please leave them below. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com and don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.